Hallo, zukünftige Deutsche und Deutscherinnen. Wie geht's heute? Ich spreche auf Englisch. In last lesson we covered wo wohnst du, didn't we? Well, today we are learning about the alphabet and German phonetics. This lesson's format will be slightly different due to what we are learning about. Doch zuerst eine kleine Zusammenfassung. But first, a little recap. Please do your normal with Heidi and Hans' conversation here. For the first gap, you have to put one specific answer. For the second, you can choose. The third has to be right according to what you put in your second answer. The fourth can only be one thing, and the same for the fifth. Have a go at this speaking activity. Okay, here is something you could have got. Heidi, hallo, wo wohnst du? Hans, ich wohne in Frankreich. Heidi, ah, also du bist Franzose. Hans, ja, ich bin, und du? Wo wohnst du? Heidi, ich wohne in Indien. Hans, also du bist Indierin. Heidi, ja, ich bin. Hans, ich muss jetzt gehen. Which, by the way, means I have to go now. <coughs> Heidi, okay, auf Wiedersehen. Hans, bis morgen. So, for uh, this one, you did get to choose. And for the second one, which is where, Han, where Heidi, in my example, says, du bist Franzose, meaning you are French, um, you it has to be appropriate according to this. So if Hans says, ich wohne in England, for example, you can't say, ah, also du bist Franzose. And the other thing is, if you said, ich wohne in England, you can't then say, ah, also du bist Englischerin, because he is a man, not a woman. <coughs> uh, the Auf Wiedersehen uh, has to be the same, and also, so does the Indierin. She is not an Indian because she is a woman and she says she's from Indian, so you don't get to choose whether she's an Indian, an Englisherin, a Franzosin, any of those. Anyway, let's carry on. Ach, Mist! I lost the endings again. Could you sort it out for me? You did so well last time. Pause and copy down the verb, including the missing endings. Okay, here is what you should have got. The infinitive to live is wohnen. First person singular, ich wohne, with an E on the end. Second person singular is du wohnst, with an ST on the end. The third person singular, er, sie, es, wohnt, with a T on the end. The first person plural is wir wohnen, with an E on the end. The second person plural is ihr wohnt, with a T on the end. And the third person plural is sie wohnen, with an E-N on the end, just like the first person plural. Okay. Also, das Alphabet. So, the alphabet. Let's get learning it. So, this is the alphabet as English people know. Now, in German, there is an extra letter, but we'll talk about that in a bit. So, this is the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, E, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. It's the alphabet as we know it. So, first I'm going to uh, recite it to you with much less animation, as I can't sing, the way the Germans would. Then we'll talk about phonetics, which is the sound of letters and of pairs or groups of letters. Also, los geht's. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V, V, X, U, Z, Z, S, Z. That extra letter there is the S, Z. The strange one which I have highlighted in pink at the end. Like I said in a previous video, it can be interpreted as double S and should be pronounced as such. It is not a B and it is not just as it is a S. Or it can sometimes, in the case of heisen, the verb heisen, it can also be z, but it is never a soft s and it's never ever a b. So, phonetics. The r or a in our language, if followed by a strong consonant, is an a sound. So if it's followed by a consonant which is stressed, is a, die katze. Yeah? If followed by a weak consonant or by no letter at all, it is an R, as in the word da. The B, or B in our language, is just B, B. 
C or C in our language is either pronounced as a K or a S. You may choose yourself where you think these rules apply. It is similar in English in terms of how it chooses it. Uh, however, the K is just slightly more common than the S. So if it's got a CK in it, like the German word for back, which is uh, Rücken, it is, which is spelled R, U with an umlaut, which we'll cover in a sec, C, K, E, N, it would be Rücken, not Rusken. So it's, a se it's similar in English in terms of the way it works there. D, or D in our language, is just D. It does not change at all. D is D is D, and it's the same in German. E, or E in our language, on its own is usually just However, this can sometimes change. If it's an EI, it's an I. If it's a... You know, there are some exceptions to this rule, and there can be E sounds in German as well. F is just F. It's the same as D. It does not change at all. G, or G in our language, is G, but very rarely J. Uh, there's one word where the J sound definitely does exist in German, and that's orange, meaning orange, but that sound is very, very rare in German, and even the letter J does not have that sound, as you're about to find out. But first, H, or H in our language, is a H, when followed by a vowel, but silent when followed by a consonant. So the German word for a underground train is an U-Bahn, U dash B A H N, but because it's followed by a consonant, it's not U Bachen, it's U Bahn. U Bahn. Uh, the letter E or I in our language is either I, E, or E. J or J in our language is a Y sound, it is not a J. K is a K always. L is a L, always. M is a M, always. N is a N, always. O is O when followed by a consonant, is O when followed by a consonant, but O when followed by a H or a vowel. Also, um, if you had, okay, a word we've covered already. Uh, the German word for red, which is rot, it is followed by a T, which is a consonant, so it's a rot. Uh, the Q is uh, not very common in German, so don't worry about its phonetics. Um, R is either r or r. So it either uh, stresses itself, if it's stressed, or it's just a r. Uh, there are some cases in which it's silent or uh, makes it so that it's so you can barely hear it, like in English car. Um, so R is either R or just a R, or it can be silent. S, uh, depending on what letters it's with, S has interesting phonetics. It can just be an S, uh, but it is quite common if it's paired with other letters for it to make a different sound. So an S-C-H, S-C-H, that's worth remembering, S-C-H makes a sh sound. So it's not sk or sch, it's sh. S-C-H makes a sh sound, as in the word schön, meaning beautiful or nice. So an S paired with a T is Sht, st, stop, stoppen, yeah? An S paired with a P is sp, as in the German word for fun, spaz, or the German word for funny, or one of the German words for funny, spesig. You know, it's a sp, not a sp. There are some exceptions, um, but most often times SCH is a sh, SP is a sp, and ST is a sht. Also, T, or T in our language, is T, but, like I say, when it's paired with the S, it is SHT. U is the same as in English. V, or V in our language, makes a F sound. However, the V sound does exist. 
V, or W in our language, makes the V sound. Uh, once again, the W sound in German is very rare, almost extinct. X, or X in our language, is most often Z, or, tz, or something like that. However, it is very rare, just like Q. Uh, upsilon, or Y in our language, is similar to English. It's a Y sound, but it can be made to make a E or a I sound. And then, uh, finally, before we get to the S set, which we've already covered, is the set, or Z. And that is most often a Ts, Ts, Ts. Uh, you will find a lot of words which contain this. Sometimes they are a Z sound, but most often a Ts. It's quite a common letter in German, more so than in English. And the S set, of us, as I've said before, is S or Z. Words or, well, vowels with two dots above them, called these dots are called umlauts, can be interpreted as having an E after them. So you can use this method and you'll be pronouncing umlauted words like a god in no time. So, uh, I don't know, an example that we've done already. Uh, oh, so the word später has an A with an umlaut. So if you say it spatter, that is wrong. But if you say it as though it's got an E on the end, not spaetta, but if you say it smoothly as though it's got an E on the end, spierter, spierter, and then you've got it. So when you see an umlaut, interpret it as an E after the vowel, if that makes sense. Also, wie spricht man diese Worte aus? So, how do you pronounce these words? Have a go at them. They are randomly selected and their meanings don't matter, yet. Say it, say it to yourself a few times, then move on to the next word. Okay, you should be saying something like, for the first one, the top one, Katze. The second one is Buse. The third one is Eng. The, th the fourth one is Ja. Remember, it's not Ja, it's Ja. The fifth one, yes, the fifth one, is Nein, because I did mention an E-I is an I sound. Nein. The sixth one, yes, the sixth one, is Dun. Dun. It's not Dun, it's Dun. Remember, imagine that it's got an E after the U. And then the seventh one, do not call anybody this, it means ugly. It's quite an important word. We will come on to appearances soon. But don't call anyone hässlich. Hässlich. And then the final one, I, that's eight. The eighth one and the final one is hunt. Hunt. Um, one thing I did not mention that uh, may be helpful here is that a D after uh, the letter N is quite often a T. T. Hunt. Not hund, but if you did put hund, we didn't mention that, so that's absolutely fine. Hund, so Katze, Bose, Eng, Ja, Nein, Dun, Hässlich, Hund. Hässlich, Hund, ugly dog. Very nice. Okay, so here we have a new verb. Today we've been covering phonetics, so we haven't really used a verb today as such, but there's one that has been appearing in our uh, fascinating and engaging and uh, page-turning tales of Heidi and Hans and their exciting conversations, uh, and that is sagen, to say. So when they go sagt Heidi, sagt Hans, hopefully you'll be able to understand this after, um, after we do this verb. So the infinitive, to say, is sagen. The first person singular is ich sage. The, the, second, per the second person, the second person singular is du sagst. The third person singular is er, sie, es, sagt, with a T on the end. The first person plural is wir sagen. The second person plural is ihr sagt. The third person plural is sie sagen. Also, sagen, sage, sagst, sagt, sagen, Sagt, sagen. Also. So, with that in mind, we've got a few incompleted sentences on here, which are about people saying things. So, um, you've got ich, gap, hallo, 
Du gab guten Tag, er gab guten Morgen, wir gab Tag, ihr gab guten Abend, sie gab Hi. This is a good opportunity to tell you that in German, if you're stuck with greetings, Hi is a German word as well as an English one. So fill these out. So for example, for the first one, if you think it is Sagen, put Ich Sagen Hallo. You can do this on a piece of paper or by speaking, I don't mind. Okay, so the first one you should have put S-A-G-E, Sage. Second one, S-A-G-S-T, Sagst. The third one, S-A-G-T, Sagt. The fourth one, Wir Sagen, remember? Ihr Sagt, Sie Sagen, Hi. Also, ich sage Hallo, du sagst Guten Tag, er sagt Guten Morgen. Wir sagen Tag, ihr sagt guten Abend, sie, sag, sie sagen Hi. Those are the answers. So try and see if you can pronounce these longer words with the phonetics we've learned. Don't panic, just take the letters one by one and try and piece it into a word. So these are the words. They're a bit longer. Most of them are, well, all of them, I think, are compound words. But if you use the phonetics rules we've learnt, you should be able to get something close to the, uh, the pronunciation, the correct pronunciation. And phonetics is hard in any language, but uh, if you want any sort of comfort, know that English is no easier for people learning our language as it is for you now learning German phonetics. So, you should have got something like, for the first one, Einkaufszentrum. I'll say it a bit slower. Ein Einkaufszentrum, Einkaufszentrum. The second one should be Landwirtschaft. I'll say it a bit slower. Landwirtschaft, Landwirtschaft. Remember that S C H makes a sh sound, and the D after the N makes a t. So Landwirtschaft, Landwirtschaft. And then the next one makes use of the SP. Remember what SP is? It's not SP, it's SP. So if you forgot about that, you can have an, you can pause and have another go now. I'm going to say it now. Sprachabteilung. I'll say it a bit slower. Sprachabteilung. Okay, so that makes use of the SP one. So, so far we've seen our SCH, we've seen our uh, D after an N, and we've seen our Z making a TS sound. Okay, so the next one doesn't make use of any rules in particular, but see if you can pronounce it. Remember, and also, just so you know, the A makes an R sound just like in English. It is Debattensaal. Debattensaal. Then the next one. This makes use of the ST that we learnt. Remember, it's not a st, it's a st. Klebestift. Klebestift. It's quite a useful one. It is glue stick, Klebestift. And the last one makes use of the SCH again. Fiedertasche. Fiedertasche. So if you got all of those correct, uh, I'm extremely impressed. But if you didn't get all of those correct, it doesn't matter uh, because phonetics are very hard and you will probably um, pick it up easier by doing the future lessons, but I just wanted you to introduce so you, you to it so you weren't saying hello guten tag and things like that because it is most definitely not guten tag, it is guten tag. Also, vielen Dank für das Zuschauen. Thanks very much for watching. Ich hoffe, dass du etwas gelernt hast. Ich wünsche dir einen schönen Tag. I hope that you have learned something. And I hope you have a very nice day. Uh, auf Wiedersehen.